Hi, Dean. Um, as we were talking, uh, you know, this thing started like nine years ago. And uh, I do a lot of work for Six Flags. And uh, it's coming back from uh, a, a concert we had done down in Georgia and flying over the property and seeing how much land that they had here that they weren't using. I had suggested to them to uh, maybe do like a Cooperstown type of project here. And knowing that there's such a big wait to get in up there, they're booked three years ahead and it's only 11 and 12 year olds. I, this area I felt needed something like that. So the president at the time asked me to uh, put something together. I put it together, brought it to them. He loved it, took it to corporate and corporate said, it's a great idea. We just can't do it because we're publicly traded and we're in the amusement business, not in the sports business. So we can't invest in something that is not in our wheelhouse. So he said, but if Alan wants to do it, <clears throat> let him do it. So that's how it started out. Uh, this piece of property that we are, we have purchased and that is, uh, uh, for years, it's been uh, designated as a, uh, a commercial recreation. And uh, it's part of the sewer service area. The sewers weren't here yet, but, but they were coming. But being as I did a lot of work at Six Flags, I knew the capacity of their sewer system and water system. I asked them if I do this, can I tie into them until they come through? And they said, perfect. So um, I was fortunate that I knew enough about Six Flags that I knew this would work. So then they, they made a deal with me and then we, we bought the property. And it started out to be uh, uh, like to take the overflow from Cooperstown with people that are 11 and 12 and they don't get in there. They, they don't have a shot the next year because now they're older, you know, so, um, and there's other teams that are booked there. So, and from what I've seen published in that, they turn down 1,500 to 2,000 teams a year. So that's how it started out. And then as I uh, started moving along with it, I do a lot of work for um, all the sports teams, the Giants, the Jets, uh, the Nets, the Red Bulls, the uh, um you know, everybody, the 76ers and that. And I was telling them about what I was going to do. And they're all saying, what about our sports? You know, we need places like this, too. So he says, you know, we never have a place for our kids to go and do this. You know, it's either go to uh, ESPN, Y World of Sports, and you have to buy a three-day hopper pass, and you have to um, live on a Disney property. So it gets very expensive, and a lot of people can't afford it, so their kids or their teams don't go there. So I went to Six Flags and I said, look, I can build this thing into something bigger. And I says, but I got to do something different than everybody else does. Cooperstown doesn't have anything else to do but to play baseball. There's the Hall of Fame up there, but the kids don't want to see uh, Babe Ruth's moldy glove. You know, they want to see Derek Jeter or somebody else. They don't even know who the Babe Ruth is. I think it's a candy bar. <laughs> so... Um, I went to them and I said, look, I want to do things different here. I want to include in my fee for them to come and play their tournaments here. I want to include them getting into Six Flags. And they made a deal with me and, and they're the, uh, the parents and the families get in for a very reduced rate as well. So now if you went to Cooperstown, excuse me, and you have three kids, one kid's playing, the other kids are doing nothing for that whole week. So they wasted a whole week's vacation up there. Here they can come and they can play and they can go into um, into the park and it just makes it a lot better. And we're right in the middle of the state. So you can go to New York, or you can go to Philadelphia, you can go to Atlantic City. The Jersey Shore is a half hour away. So there's a lot of things that you can do by being in the area. So it just seemed like that would be a good fit. And then as more and more we got into it and we saw that there was a really big need for all this stuff in the area. We said, well, you know, let's expand it to the other sports. So then I needed to have um, team suites here. And uh, the town had passed a resolution saying you can't have dormitories, which is basically what, you know, a team suite is in a way. It's the same thing. So I had to, uh, you know, fight with the going for my, my uh, I didn't have to go for the environments or anything, but to let them stay in the planning board and let us do this, I had to prove to them that we weren't building dormitories. We were building team suites. <coughs> Excuse me. The team suites, you can rent for a weekend. You can't go to Rutgers and rent a dorm for a weekend. So we have that uh, pretty much, we run that through the hotels. 
One of the things I had, problems I had with the hotels trying to get them here, I did a whole feasibility study, was that once uh, um, Thanksgiving came, we were closed until um, March. So what do the hotels do? Six Flags is closed. There's nothing in the area now. So I said, you know, I was going to build an indoor arena later on. I'll just put the indoor arena in now. And uh, then the hotels worked. So um, we have two hotels here. One's 150-room uh, La Quinta, and the other's 150-room uh, Hawthorne Suites. And uh, then what if we we're building such a nice hotel, we might as well add a convention center on there too, or, or a conference center, not really a convention center. So we kind of added that onto it as well. Then once we added that, basketball, all the AAU tournaments, volleyball, wrestling, um, you just you go right down the list. Uh, it's cheerleading, cheerleading is huge. And there's really no uh, place in this area to go for it, you know, for, for big tournaments and that. And uh, we started going around asking people, and we were sold out in a heartbeat. You know, we have people fighting over times when they when they can be here. So um, we found out that we were something that was definitely needed in the area. So uh, that's how we we made it go, and and it's it's for the kids. I mean, it's it's there's so many so much talent in New Jersey, and New York, Pennsylvania, that never get to go anyplace. You know, I had talked to one of the. Uh, one of the baseball professionals who's from the area. And he said that he was lucky that his parents took him to Florida to be noticed, to be in the showcases. He said there were better players in him that the parents didn't want to spend the money to take them down there because it was too expensive for them. So figuring that, you know, all these good athletes we have here, this is going to give them a chance, not only from kids around here, but from kids around the world, because we're actually, you know, a little cheaper than going anyplace else. And if you go to Florida in the wintertime, it's 110 degrees yeah. down there. It's humid. You know, around here it's 80, 90 degrees. You know, maybe you get a day once in a while it's 100 degrees, but that's not that often. So, um, and then we're, we're doing all artificial fields so that if it rains, uh, like, for example, if you go to Cooperstown and it rains, you might not play there for two, three days because the, the grass is all wet and they don't want to ruin the fields and that. So you spend a week up there sitting in your little cabin doing nothing. So what our fields, um, for, for several reasons, one, so you could play on them immediately after the rain. And uh, some of the kids love playing in the rain. Some of the tournaments will probably go on during the rain. But, um, you know, another thing is that we're not going to use any pesticides or uh, uh, fertilizers or anything like that on the fields. And then because around us is a lot of um, uh, woods and that, we won't have animals coming out trying to graze on there and, um, you know, going on the fields and the kids playing in, the, in that. So there's several reasons why we went with the artificial turf. So uh, that's the way we wound up with that. And then I was I was lucky enough, and, and, and you've met them, to have put a good team together. People that believed in the project know this will work, and uh, they're the best of that I could possibly get. And uh, I'm very happy with them, and it was just getting coordinated, getting it all together. Um, I have a really good uh, construction manager at Joseph Gingoli Company. And, uh, you know, the uh, contractors that we're going to use under them are all people that are going to be handpicked because we need to build this thing in a hurry. We're not going out for bid on the stuff. We're picking people that can get it done. And in my book, quality isn't expensive. It's priceless. So you know, we're building this thing to be here for a long time. I want it to be right, but I also need it to be quick. So we're plugging along with it, and then uh, you know it's it's going to be very interesting. And to not have a shovel in the ground, and not to be really out in the world telling everybody that we're here, we're sold out. And uh, so that that shows that this is something that is definitely needed. Great, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>